only if I told you that McDonald's, the world's largest fast food chain, doesn't make most of their money from selling fast food. Serving close to 68 million populations every single day. That's twice the size of Malaysia's population on a daily basis. But do they actually make money from selling fries, burger, McFlurries, you know, all the childhood food that we all know and love? Let's mind out. Let's rewind a little bit. McDonald's first began as a drive through restaurant in the US back in 1940 by the McDonald's brothers, Richard and Maurice. Their goal was simple, to serve burgers fast. And to do that, they came up with speedy service system that was based on the concept of a production line. Meaning instead of cooking each burger when the customer orders it, the kitchen would always have it produced every single second. And on top of that, they also have a very simple menu. Basically, they only have nine items from burgers, soft drinks, french fries to milk and coffee. And this allowed them to serve their customers quickly. In fact, much more than most other restaurants at that time. This concept soon got super popular, earning them up to $200,000 a year, and later caught the attention of Ray Kroc, a milkshake machine salesperson, who later teamed up with the brothers to replicate the business model and then franchise them out of California, US. But things weren't so rosy. Kroc and the brothers were only able to break even and even had to take out loans to scale and also cover their expenses. Something was clearly not right until Kroc met an investor named Harry Sonneborn and immediately convinced them that what they needed were assets and the real money was in real estate. You're not in the burger business. You're in the real estate business. You don't build an empire off a 1.4% cut of a 15 cent hamburger. You build it by owning the land upon which that burger is cooked. What you ought to be doing is buying up plots of land, then turning around and leasing said plots to franchisees who as a condition of their deal should be permitted to lease from you and you alone. And from then onwards, McDonald's space was changed forever. Basically, the idea is to own the land and the building and then lease it to the franchisee. And why is that a freaking genius idea? Let me show you. Let's just say I have a dream to open my own McDonald's restaurant. I will first need to purchase a franchise license from them. Basically, the permission to use their branding and recipe by paying a fee of about 22.5 thousand US dollars or approximately 100 thousand ringgit. And that license is only for 10 years, not for a lifetime. And guess what do I need next? A property to set up my shop, right? No need to worry, because McDonald's has plenty of properties for me to choose already, which technically also means McDonald's is now my landlord, as I will also need to pay them rent monthly. Now, if you zoom out, you can already see that McDonald's is able to generate multiple income streams from franchising, property ownership, rental fees, and also royalties. And this real estate business model is so successful that a separate business subsidiary named McDonald's Franchise Realty Corporation was created to specially find and acquire land and buildings. In fact, in 2022, McDonald's brought in a whopping 23.2 billion of revenue, in which 61% of that came from rent and other fees paid by the franchise owners, and the remaining 38% was from sales at McDonald's own locations. But something that I want to point out here is that running their own stores isn't as profitable as you might think, because only out of that $8.7 billion revenue from their own stores, they only got to keep about 1.4 billion which is about 15% only. Why? Because they had to fork out another huge chunk to cover the cost of running those locations. Things like paying for equipment, staff and other operating costs. And those things cost a lot of money. Maybe that's why a lot of people have been complaining about the F&B business being low margin, right? And that's why McDonald's can pocket a massive 83% of the revenue from the franchise restaurants. As compared to the franchisee themselves, they only pocket about 16% of the revenue. And that's why that explains why McDonald's is such a big fan of this business model. It's a gold mine for them. And their stock is also trading at an all-time high as of the making of this video. So if you like to buy high, sell low, like most of the people out there, you can easily do so with the sponsor of this video, Momo. Just head on to the app, search for MCD and select trade. 
easy as that. And fun fact, another famous F&B company like Starbucks also got into the real estate game themselves, collecting rents from their own properties. And you can also invest in them through the ticker symbol SBUX. So feel free to use my link in the pinned comment down below to open an account for yourself and also win lots of rewards like free stock and also stock vouchers. But just before you leave, the story doesn't end here. Did you know that McDonald's menu is different all around the world? For example, Hong Kong has sausage and egg twisty pasta, South Korea has Oreo Affogato, and India has what they dub as McDonald's tallest burger, the chicken Maharaja. And for Malaysia, we have our famous GCB. And in fact, if you search on YouTube, people actually go on a quest to try out the different McDonald's in the world. And one of the key reasons why the McDonald's menu differs across various countries despite franchisees having the same license from McDonald's themselves, is because they applied the localization strategy. And this strategy allows them to cater to the different tastes and preferences of each country. Like for example, you won't find any beef products on McDonald's menus in India due to obviously religious beliefs. While in Malaysia, all food served in McDonald's is halal certified to cater to the country's majority Muslim population. And then in Japan, the menu might include unique items like the teriyaki McBurger or green tea McFlurry to cater to the local taste palette. And with this strategy, McDonald's can innovate and add new offers offerings to their menu and continue to resonate with local customers yet maintain their global branding. Or in other words, they think global but they act local. And that's why they are still super strong even after being in a business for over 80 years. So do you learn anything new about your favorite childhood restaurant or are you now intrigued to buy their stock? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and as usual, I will see you in the next one.